Welcome to the Veterinary Marketing Podcast, where it's all about helping your veterinary practice attract, engage, and retain clients. Broadcasting a new podcast every Monday from sunny Southern California, here's your host, Brandon Bashirs. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 180 of the Veterinary Marketing Podcast. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, we are going to talk about how to draw, drive your ad cost down and also how to make your ads more effective. So if you're running ads, you're thinking about running ads for your veterinary practice, this is hopefully going to give you a great framework for doing that. And it's going to also help you to get uh, better cost per result and cost per action. That's one thing that I'm seeing in in general right now is that it's difficult to maintain cost per leads as you go. I've been seeing quite a bit of uh, ad cost increase for a lot of clients. And so I think that this is going to be a very helpful episode just because, you know, driving action and activity at a reasonable cost is, is going to be important, especially as we, you know, we have seasonal changes, we have competition coming into markets and you know, difficulty in, in getting more clients in the door. So this is going to be really practical and helpful, I think. Before we begin, I want to mention a few things. First, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe in iTunes or Google Play. Wherever you listen to your podcast, you can also hear on Spotify as well. And if you ever have any questions, comments, you need help with anything, head on over to the Facebook group, The Veterinary Marketing Nerds. If you go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash The Veterinary Marketing Nerds, you can check out um, and get help there from a lot of really smart people. Um, we have like 1,100 members inside that group, so it's a great place to get collaboration and help. All right, let's jump into today's podcast episode. We're going to be talking about how we drive ad cost down, how we make our ads effective, and um, really understand, you know, what's going on, how to improve the, the work product that we're producing, and and also drive our cost per action down lower. So, I think that a lot of times. If you're tasked with doing marketing for your veterinary practice, um, you might not be sure what you should be doing or how you should be doing it. And so you're just trying different things. And I totally get that, you know, trying to see what works and what people are engaging with and what people are, are, you know, liking and sharing and commenting with. I think doing constant testing is, is something that's important. But I do think that if you have... The ability to, and I would really, really suggest that you do this, is that you put some time down to figure out who you're going to be targeting, what your your client avatars are, and start with that, obviously. Um, A lot of times, especially if you're busy, you just want to get something out. So resist the urge just to put something out for the sake of putting something out, especially if you're going to be applying ad budget to it. Make sure that you're being thoughtful with who it is you're targeting, what kind of uh, stage in the buying process they're in, and how you're going to be reaching these people. We'll talk more on that in just a minute, but that's, you know, super basics. Every single time I do digital marketing and I'm creating ads or if I'm creating campaigns or anything, it doesn't matter if it's emails, it doesn't matter if it's social media posts, it doesn't matter if it's content like this, I'm thinking about who is my target market, what do they want, what do they need, what is their mindset, you know, how am I reaching these people? And so um, it's important that you're constantly in that mindset of how am I going to serve this group of people? What is it that they need? What is it they want? And where are they looking for it? So understanding that I think is is number one. And if you get that down well, you're going to be able to create higher quality creative. And so whether it's a post for Instagram, whether it's a podcast episode or a video I think that it's time that you, at least, you know, on a regular basis, not, it doesn't have to be every single piece of content. Every single piece doesn't have to be highly polished and edited and curated, but the more that you can do, the better. And I think that if you are, you know, let's say rating your, take a, take a minute and rate your content in terms of quality, in terms of creativity and things like that, and, and think about, okay, how is this going right now? what's my average kind of content quality? Am I at an eight or a seven or a nine or is, you know, everything that I'm putting out a 10? And I do know some practices that are putting out, you know, tens on everything. Um, But how can I take that and take it up a notch? And what would make it look better? What would make it engaging? What would make it more entertaining? What would make it more useful or helpful? And how can I actually take the, the content up 
to the next level. Because I think that's really important. You gotta, at least once in a while, mix in a very high quality piece so that you can test and get results on it. One thing that I've noticed too is that, especially if you're running ads, the higher quality that you have, and when I say quality, that could be entertainment value, that could be utility or usefulness, or it could be, you know, just a better piece of, of, you know, your video editing is done professionally. Or you have a piece of pillar content, like I talked about with um, Bryn from Bryn Ziddle um, on the two podcasts ago about video production. Having those pillar pieces of content that you can reuse over and over again, that's an asset that's going to help you for the long term. So what kind of piece of content could you create that is going to be that, you know, pillar content? And I think that if you could have just shoot for doing 12 pieces of pillar content in a year. And if you break it down or even 10 pieces of pillar content, something that you're going to put tons of time and energy into. And I know that you don't have tons of time, but if you make it a priority, I know that you can do it. And if you, for example, said to yourself, okay, I'm going to create the best ever new puppy guide and it's going to be so comprehensive it's going to be so helpful so valuable and so useful for my clients and that was the intent that you started out with and it's not only that it's going to be easy to consume it's going to be very concise it's going to help these pet owners not only understand what they need to know but it's going to actually help them to avoid you know these common problems and if you sat down and decided to do that about 12 different topics and you just did that once, you know, one t- one time you made 12 pieces of pillar content and you use those, that could transform your business. Um, one of my marketing mentors, his name is Russ Henneberry. He's, uh, the, he was the um, CMO at digitalmarketer.com and him and Ryan Dice, who's another one of my marketing mentors, they were sitting down and talking about what they wanted to do to grow Digital Marketer. And Russ said, you know what, my goal is just to create one piece of pillar content that is epic content, and I'm going to do that once a month for the next month. And they sat down and they mapped it out, what were the topics they were going to cover, and that one action drove millions of dollars of sales into their business. And I totally believe that it could be transformational to your veterinary practice. If you became known for just epic levels of content and information that you gave away, you know, for like mini courses and emails or, you know, video series or things like that, that would be transformational for your practice because people would look to you as the veterinarian in their town and they would want to do business with you because you're the person who knows what you're talking about. Not only that, they know, like, and trust you and they appreciate what you've given them too. So I think that that is, is one thing that I think might get overlooked is improving the quality of your creative. And I'll tell you, I'm guilty of this too. And so like, I'm, as I'm saying this, I'm talking to myself, you know, that there's always ways to improve your content and to do better. And so there's a lot of times, especially if you're a personality type like mine, where I'm just kind of a ready, fire, aim type person. And I like to just do activity and get a lot of things going when in reality, taking that extra time to make sure things are really awesome is very, very important. So um, I think that testing out what your strengths are and seeing, you know, if, if you're terrible at video quality or video content, maybe don't focus it on video content in the beginning. Or maybe look at hiring somebody like Bryn to come out and make pillar content for your practice, because I think that would be money really worth spent. Or if you're not into doing um, video, make a podcast that's very helpful. Or if you're not into podcasting, you know, do live streams. Or, you know, typically in the veterinary industry, as a veterinarian, you're pretty good at writing. Um, You've been to a lot of schooling and you're above average skill set in in writing and communicating just because you've done it so much so you know make sure to think about that how is the best way that you are able to communicate with your clients and um you know what is it that's going to really help make that difference for your veterinary practice i think that's really really important to think about so um having a mix of direct response pillar content as well as um, direct response, I'm sorry, awareness pillar content, I think is very important. So we have to remember that we need to attract people to your practice. But once we've attracted them to the practice, we also need to get them 
a foot in the door and get them moving in to, you know, hey, welcome to my practice. If you are a pet owner, then I think you're going to be interested in this. And then taking them into the next level of, hey, now that I know that you're interested in these topics, you need to come into our practice. So let's let's think about that for a little bit here. Um, the awareness content is going to be the first impression that you have. And again, that's like what Bryn was talking about on, on that episode. And I'm referencing that a bunch because I'm just, I'm thinking about the cat clinic episode. I'm sorry, the, the video that she did with the clinic cat. It's really, really high quality. And having that as a first impression for your practice is going to make a huge difference um, in terms of how people approach you and perceive what your, your practice is about. Not only that, what your practice charges for rates, what they'll expect to pay, what they'll expect to get just really helps to set the stage for the the next step in the relationship. So having that high quality creative for awareness is also important, but mix in some real stuff too that's not necessarily polished or perfect. Let people get to know you. Let people get to know your practice and do things like um, live streams and informal videos and just a good mix of content. Um, once you have that in place, then really reuse, I'm sorry, use retargeting and then mix in the offers that you have. What is a good transas- transitional offer? And we talked about offers in the last episode in number 179. Be sure to check that out if you haven't listened to it. I think it's very valuable. But um, having that mix of awareness content, retargeting content for offers, and then also bottom of funnel, so for people that are current clients, Always be showing them something that that's in there and rotating. And I think rotating on a, a monthly schedule is probably the best place to be right now. Um, looking at the landscape and social media with Instagram or Facebook, and then um, on top of that, having great transactional based keywords that are driving in people who are actively looking for a solution to come into your practice. So we're talking about how to drive ad costs down. And I think that having that higher quality content is going to help you get lower cost engagements, whether it's views or clicks or comments or shares or likes. Then on top of that, you need to make sure that your website is up to speed. And I can't tell you how important it is to have a great website. If you want to, by the way, I work a lot with Whisker Cloud. Whisker Cloud has amazing websites. If you go to whiskercloud.com, um, you can check them out. I do the ad work for them and their clients, which I love doing. But um, I was working with a practice the other day and they wanted me to start some ads for them. And I was trying to find what hours they were open so that I could create the ads that were going to be run only during business hours. And so I looked and was looking and looking and trying to find, and I was on a desktop even, so I'm not sure what the experience was like on a mobile device. But it was difficult to find what hours they were open. And so, you know, making sure that all of the information is set up in a way that is easy to find, easy to understand, and doesn't require the client to do, you know, five to seven minutes. I think it took five minutes to find what their hours were. If I was a client, I would have given up and hit the back button and gone on to the next page. So um, luckily, this client is going to be getting a new website here um, because they absolutely need one. But having better calls to action and calls to action that work well is going to help you to drive down your cost per action. So it might not drive down the cost per click, but it will drive down the cost per action because it's easier for the clients to take action. So I think that that is um, kind of the, the second thing that is going to be important in driving your ad cost down. So number one is making sure that you have high quality ad creative mixed in there with your your normal everyday content, but mixing in that high quality is going to be really, really important. Then number two is making sure that your website and your direct response mediums, so ways for people to engage or take the next step with your practice are on par and needs to be easy to use and kind of seamless in general. The next thing that's going to really help to drive down ad cost is to build out these micro segments. And I talked about this also in in the last episode, but building out your your content that's niche and helps to get and identify different segments of your traffic, whether it's people engaging with videos or people that are commenting or people that are liking and sharing, or, you know, you have all of these amazing retargeting options inside 
of Facebook and Instagram now, you should absolutely be running retargeting ads. And if you're running traffic to a small group of people, it's very, very cost effective to reach those people with relevant offers that are going to get, they're going to be excited to see you following up with them. So make sure that you're hitting those retargeting audiences and that you're not letting them just go to waste. If you're running ads that's getting your content out there, you absolutely need to be re- running retargeting ads with those engagement audiences. Or if you're running traffic to your website, you need to be hitting those people up with additional ads. Um, display ads are just so cheap, especially if you have a good amount of traffic coming to your your website, You know, following up and making sure that they're going to see you across other platforms. It just makes a lot of sense for sure. Then if you don't have a huge ad budget, which is totally okay, a lot of practices don't have huge ad budgets, make sure that you're really focusing in on that low-hanging fruit. So you need to be driving new clients into your practice to keep your growth going. So, you know, on top of, I'd say, a small Facebook and Instagram budget, using your, your ad budget for just specifically transactional searches on Google AdWords is going to be the lowest hanging fruit to give you the highest potential return. So let's let's map this out. I think what I, most practices should be doing. Let's talk about this. Specialty practices, I think, are you know even under the same umbrella here. Your audience might be different, but um, if you're a general practice, you're going to be targeting consumers. If you're a specialty practice, the only difference is you might be creating content to be targeting you know other veterinary professionals that you can get referrals from. So make sure that you know who your your target is, but. I think that you have kind of two different plays in traffic. You have your transactional searches where people are actively looking for a solution. And then on top of that, you have your branding and retargeting. And you have different networks for each of those. With your branding and retargeting, you have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Google search, um, sorry, Google display. And for the transactional, you have Google search specifically. So... I like to just keep it search network only, no search partners, no display ads for those transactional searches because that's going to give you a lot of junk traffic, which you don't want to have. On the branding and awareness side, you're going to have awareness content. You're going to have retargeting middle offers and then bottom of funnel retargeting offers as well. And I think that if you have that with a small budget on both sides, you're going to see a healthy, steady flow of new clients coming in as well as a mix of you know the old clients coming in too so that's the that's the key is to keeping everything full especially through the the slower seasons in fall and winter and i've heard from quite a few practices that you know things are getting slowed down they want to get more traffic and activity coming in so um i definitely think that that's important but i would love to hear what you have to say maybe um i'd be interested in doing like a, a hot seat inside of the uh, veterinary marketing nerds group if if you're open to that be sure to send me an email or actually comment inside that group and say hey i'd be open to that hot seat and we can go through and do a kind of evaluation of your marketing make recommendations and things like that so um totally non-judgmental and just trying to be helpful if you're open and um you know feeling like you'd like to do that definitely be pretty cool to try that out so um would love to hear what you think though be sure to join the, the veterinary marketing nerds facebook group And we'll see you in the next episode. Have a great day, everybody. Talk to you later.